All right, so welcome back. And this is question number one of a new series that I'm doing where I'm just kind of iterating through the list of fleet code questions just directly after I solve them myself and just explain them to you all so that, you know, if you're having challenges with it or you need someone to kind of work through it with you, I'm kind of here to, to do that. And it's also beneficial for me because it practices me, you know, explaining my solution and talk to you all about it. So this is a very famous question called two sum. It's what a lot of people do, you know, first, it's a very, very common interview question. So it's, it's a great one to begin this series with. So what we're given is a, oh, and I just need to add, I just did the question so I can just control Z here. That's the answer, but I just needed the, the method details, but we're given a class called solution and we have a new method called two sum where we want to return an integer and we're past a integer array called nums and we have a target here and it's an integer and so essentially what we want to do is this array of nums we want to iterate through it and find the two values that sum to our target number and so here we see that 2 plus 7 is equal to 9 and so what we want to return which is an integer of arrays is these the indexes of these two values. So in this case, you know, two, the index is zero, so we return that, and then seven, the index is one, so we return that. In this case, the number six, well, two plus four equals six, so we return their indexes one and two. Okay, so to implement that, what we're gonna use is a hash map, and that's a very famous data structure um, for a lot of these questions. And so a lot of times, especially the easy questions, I think of, okay, can I implement this with a hash map so I can get constant time lookup? And so it enables us to kind of store a dictionary of all the values that we've seen uh, in the past. And so that, you know, as we iterate through this array, we're just gonna be appending these values along with their indexes in the array in this dictionary. And so what we're gonna do is, as we're iterating through this array, we're going to compare the current value with all the values that we've seen previously to see if we can find one that add up to this target number. Now, if that's a lot of words and doesn't make much sense, I think it'll make more sense once you see the code. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll start with a for loop and we're just going to be iterating through this nums array that we're given. and we're just iterating one by one. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create that hash map and both the key and the value will be an integer. And so now what we're gonna do is the key will be the value here. So it's going to be, you know, each respective number in the array. And then the value of the hash map will be the index of that number in the array. Okay, so as we're iterating through this array, we're going to be constantly adding or appending these values to our hash map. So it would be hm, which is short for hash map, dot put. And then we're going to put nums at i, so the current value, and then its index. And so now we're going to add an if statement. And we're just going to check whether or not our hash map contains a key that is equal to our target number minus the current number. Because we know that, well, our current number, if like if we take our target nine and we subtract it by seven, that equals two, and we can check our hash map, which contains all the previous values in our array, have we seen two before? And if so, well, we have the index, so we can return it, right? So essentially what this is doing is, is just calculating, you know, what other number we need plus our current number to equal our target and do we have that and have we seen it previously so if we go ahead and 
check that. So if we do, then what we can do is we just return the index of that value. So what we would return an integer, which is the required data type here, new int. And this is just a shortcut so you can kind of define a new array with pre-initialized values. So um, in this case, we would put i in the second value and then we would get the index for that number here. So because the value contains our index of that number in the array, we want to get it here. And we also know that we want this i to be the second parameter because since we're grabbing something that we've seen previously, we want that in the first value here because we want an increasing order. All right, so, and then finally, if we iterate through this entire array and don't see anything, we just want to return an array of just zero. So that would be just new int two. Because by default, they're, it's initialized to an array of zeros. So let's go ahead and run that. I might have an error too, but we'll see. Oh. Let's see here. Numbs.length. We have to put this outside the array. <laughs> There we go. Accepted. Let's go ahead and submit that. And great. So it's a three millisecond runtime, and it's also actually faster than eighty nine percent of submissions. So it's a it's a pretty optimal solution. So I sorry about the the quick little error there. It's just because since this was inside the for loop, each iteration was just getting you know redefined here. Um, so you have to put that outside of it. So it was just overwriting all the values that we were storing. So yeah, I, I hope that helped and good luck with the rest of your algorithms. Thank you.